If the leader says that two and two are five, well, two and two are five. This quote by George Orwell was an unwavering dogma for the USSR, with its leader controlling the future and the past. Stalin's five-year economic plan involved rapid industrialization and large-scale agricultural collectivization. To fulfill the Soviet leadership's unrealistic demands in four years and boost labor productivity further, propagandist Yakov Guminer developed this poster. It reads, two and two plus the enthusiasm the asthma of the workers equals five. By 1933, Stalin proclaimed the plan a success, but in reality, Ukrainians paid a huge price for the Soviet Union's ambitions, namely during the Great Famine of Holodomor. It was impossible to conceal that many deaths and corpses. That is why the Soviet Union claimed that the famine emerged as a result of crop failure, or the so-called objective conditions, that the party made every effort to prevent it. The Soviet propaganda machine was in full motion, even foreign reporters were involved, knowingly or not. New York Times correspondent Walter Duranti wrote in his dispatch from Moscow, conditions are bad, but there is no famine. However, Welsh journalist Gareth Jones, who traveled through rural Ukraine at the time, reported a different story. He wrote, everywhere I heard crying, we have no bread, we are dying. It was not the only instance of the Soviet regime twisting the truth. In 1930, the state political directorate staged a show trial to discredit Ukrainian intellectuals. They invented the trial of the Union for Ukraine's Liberation. Though this union did not exist, there was no such organization. There was no charter or program. It was a fabricated case which led to executions. Some of the defendants, like linguist Savolod Gansov, spent 28 years in camps. This is how the Stalinist regime tried to intimidate the Ukrainian intelligentsia and put an end to Ukraine's resurgent national idea. They aimed to get rid of national self-identification and indigenousness so that people did not feel connected to them and all nations in the Soviet Union became equal, so to speak. It was very difficult to make it happen as there were so many nations that formed the Soviet Union. Each of them had its own traditions and beliefs. Throughout its history, the Soviet Union suppressed and eliminated religious beliefs. In the wake of the famine of 1921 to 1923, the communist the Communist regime started to confiscate church possessions, ostensibly to help starving peasants. They launched a large-scale anti-religious propaganda campaign and at the same time worshipped Lenin and Stalin as gods. Natalia Chakotun, UATV.